Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's nightcap has a lot of machining. I do some more machining on the little cast iron piston rings for the gas engine. Get those parted off, uh, get them gapped and tempered and actually get one. Put on the piston and we'll try and see if we can get, get into the bore without breaking it. That'll be a little bit later on. Debs comes in and does the draw for the Kennedy snap gauge set. Uh, I'm going to show that later on as well. I was expecting Emmy coming home to do this. Uh, unfortunately, she can't get away from work, which is definitely going to come up and be part of next, next week's NAICAP. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all well. Welcome to John's Sunday night giveaway. Um, I'm just going to show you how we get free piece of metal. And the winner is Bob Monaghan. Thanks, Dave, that was great. All I need to do now is get your address and I'll get that into the post for you this week. I'm going to do another draw this week. This time it's going to be for a nice little Mercia Imperial DTI gauge. I got this one given up a friend at a steam rally, pm simply to give away. It's a real one, it's a real heavy duty one. And it's got a nice back mount on it as well, which is really handy. I'll get a close up shot of that so you can see exactly what this week's prize is going to be. As normal, if you want to have a chance at winning that, all you have to do is send me an email. That's me, email address up there. Email, email with your name. Your name goes into the bucket. If your name's drawn out, I'll post it off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. It's just a little way of me saying thanks for all the support I've had. And I've got basically two of these that I use all the time, but I've got quite a few put away in a drawer that I keep. It's pointless putting another one there, it just wouldn't get used. So somebody might as well get some use from it. If you win it and you don't need it, give it to somebody else. That's the way it works. Give things away, be nice, be kind, be happy. There's been quite a lot going on uh, in the shop this week. I've had an electrician up um, and he's wired in a real heavy 40 amp supply into the shed of the garden so I can start using my Artec plasma cutter. Uh, I'll go up there and show you a little bit of how things are starting to get set up. I've got an air supply in there. As I've said, I've already got the, the heavy supply in so I can get plenty of power up there. Um, I've got one or two little bits and pieces to do to finish it off, uh, some air in connection to do. I'll show a little bit of that, just so you can get a, a feel for what's going to be happening up there. Um, I'll be doing a series of videos uh, for our tech, but also I'll be using the, the plasma table, uh, just generally using it, I hope, and I'll show it in one or two of the night caps. I've already mentioned uh, my friend Bob, who does do all the, the clock gauges. Every clock gauge I give away, uh, it's been through Bob's hands. You make sure that they're all set up properly and nice and clean and free and calibrated. A few weeks ago, well, in fact, it was a couple of years ago actually, I got a, a rail counter given. I think I got given off Richard, and it was in a bit of a state. The box was dilapidated, a lot of the parts were missing. Um, Emma Ritson kindly give us some parts at the bash, there was all the spindles and all the little bits of dried bits and pieces and Bob took it away and I thought nothing else of it and then it's come back and Bob's made a fantastic job of uh, reconditioning it he's even recovered the box I'll get some close up shots of this um, just so you can see what, what sort of work Bob actually does he's made a really nice job, he's actually he's even repaired the box, the box was broken, he's recovered the box relined it, cleaned all the stickers up, put everything back on the way it's supposed to be it really is a nice fantastic little machine as I've said it'll make a real nice giveaway probably for Christmas The 
especially with having all the all the different bits, all the different wheels and drives. I mean, obviously now we just use a, a digital thing. You put a little sticker on, and the magic eye picks it up. But it's not really the same as if this is this is proper gear. Yeah. He's got a lot of patience, and he is really good with with small things. Uh, and he's a big lad as well, and he really does make a nice job. Anyway, I'll get some close-up shots of that. Have a look later on. I've already got a real a mint one of these. Somebody did send us a one. Um, so this one will be given away probably at Christmas um, like it's a special a special giveaway because it really is a nice item okay, the OD needs to be 40 4.1 and we are at 40 44.5 so we need point 0.4 off there point 0.2 aside Touch it off and just do a, a nice light clean up put on it. The size isn't that tricky because the ring's going to be split and expanded, but we're turning the same size as the ball now, which is between 40 and 40, between 44 and 44.1. Take a point one cut off this now. Point one is day, take point two off. Forty-four point two. We should bring it dead on to size. Point one spot on. Right, now we need to part this off and there was many rings as we can get. And uh, no parting tool. It's weird to weighed. So what I'll do, I'll sharpen a bit of high speed steel up just to make a little parting tool just to gently cut them off. That's a nice little high speed steel parting tool. I've had for quite some time. I just need to make sure that the tool is square onto the end of the job. I know it's square onto the hole that. Right, I'll go like that. I need to measure the make sure that the tool tip is actually touching the side of there. Now we can measure it using the DR rule, what of our thickness the rings are, which is 4.6 mil, you know, we'll part them off. Right, the tool is 1.3 mil. So we need to just barely touch that off. Right, that's just wiping the dirt off the end of there. Class that as zero. Once again, we want 1.3 plus 4.6, it's 5.9. I think we need to run a little bit faster than that. It's run 45 RPM, that, that looks good. I'm not sure what cast iron there. That's what the noises it makes. Doesn't 
very good. Do you want to go slower or faster? I think a lot of the problem is I've got too much tool sticking out. I'll try it slower, just not with interest. Faster. Right, so what I need to do is shorten this tool right off. I'll use a different tool holder. It means when I've got it set up now, I want to personally and try and get one part it off. set the different part and tool up, this one's a lot shorter it's dead on centre height and it's exactly on the distance that we need to get the length of the ring so we'll see what sort of results for our part and this one off I've got the carriage locked so it can't move anywhere that's better it's a bit but it's certainly, it's certainly cutting better I hope I've got enough metal to get one more of this. Right, I can get one more. These rings are a nice fit in the piston. That's a good fit in the bottom groove. And this one is very slightly bigger. And that's a good fit in the top groove because the grooves are slightly different sizes. All I need to do is just a gentle rub, just to polish the that's nice, and that one's nice in there. These rings are exactly the same size as the cylinder ball. They won't quite go in. That, they, they, you, you can tap them in so they're the same size as the ball. A lot of people suggest breaking the rings, put them in a vase and crack them. These rings are too big a section to break. I've got a slitting saw here which is 8 thousandths of an inch thick. I'm going to try and slit them with that, which hopefully when the rings go in should give us a, a decent clearance because you need a clearance on the two ends of the rings. These slitting saws have really got one ambition in life and that's to break. You can see it's already got teeth missing. This one come out of a skip I got it given. Um, hopefully there'll be enough life left in it just to gently cut through those two rings. You must run them slow, as slow as you can get them to go. Which with this mill with the inverter on is pretty slow. I could actually go down slower than that. I've got some lower gears. I'll change the gears down a little bit and really slow it down so it just gently scrapes its way through. Right, that's really slow as you can see because basically all you've got there is a saw Basically only got teeth halfway around it, but it is doing the job for us.
Right, that's it, we're through. So that's near the in the eight house slip through the rings. And the rings are a tight fit in the bow, so we should end up with probably three to four thou ring gap which is gonna be quite adequate. One of the rings into the into the bow. They wouldn't go in until I put the, the cut in them. I've got a fourth hole feel like gauge here, which is a a nice fit. So that means we've got a ring gap of four thousandths of an inch, which for what this is will be perfectly acceptable. Two and a half thou would have been better. What we need to do now is expand the rings. The rings need expanding. 15% of the bore, so we need to know what 15% of 44 is. This is something that absolutely amazes me. What is 15% of 44? The answer is 6.6. 6.6, .6. <laughs> there you go. Isn't that absolutely amazing? This is the setup I'm going to use for tampering the rings or for expanding the rings 6.6 .6 was the required 6.5 it's certainly near enough this tape on mandrel well it's actually a screwdriver has expanded the ring to the required 6.6 .6 millimeters below it i've got a bath containing 1040 oil it should be sperm oil or whale oil but i'm sure 1040 will do what i do i'll heat the ring up evenly Till it's red hot, the ring will expand, it'll fall off a screwdriver, go into the oil, and hopefully damper it itself. Anyway, we'll give it a go and see what happens. I should be able to get enough heat up just using this propane torch. I've got oxy propane, but not here. A little bit under under heat there, but I think it has taken. Yeah, it has. And so what we turned the we turned the gap. And it is springy. It's not just. So basically, that's one ring done. I've already French, Frenchened, you bell end. <laughs>